What? Uh, Dizzy, what are you doing? Um. 60 bucks, water damage. We're currently at the boardwalk right now. We have a lot planned for today. There's a new coffee shop at the boardwalk. People are freaking out about it. I hope it's good. I'm interested to see it in person. Does it look as bad as the pictures made it out to be on the internet? So we have to go do that. We have a new Sam the Eagle sipper in Epcot. So we gotta go over to Epcot real quick. We're gonna go review some of that barbecue. Sam the Eagle. And then we'll time jump and we'll head off to Animal Kingdom and then we'll talk about the world of Avatar and kind of why Disney hates it right now. We have a lot planned today. Hope you guys are excited. Okay, so Disney has torn down the ESPN grill. They actually have some decent food there. There, but it was kind of outdated. So I do kind of like this new shop that's coming in. It's called the Cake Bake Shop. But they've completely gutted it. It says it's gonna be opening in 2023. We will see about that. Um, I don't think it's gonna be opening in 2023. All right, so here's a little concept art of how it's gonna look. It looks actually really nice. So it looks like there's gonna be a bakery portion, and then over here, there's gonna be a restaurant. That chocolate cake looks really good. Those double chocolate waffles, I think that's what I'm gonna get when this place opens. Again, opening 2023, I will believe it when I see it. We all know how long Tron took. Disney just takes forever with their construction. So, 2023, late, 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 probably winter 2023. Daisies over here. This is not the bird we're looking for though. Now they're setting up all the booths and the tents. Because Festival of Arts starts on January 13th. It is my favorite festival here that they do at Epcot. We will be here on opening day showing off everything that they have. Now Epcot's kind of weird because we're in between that festival season, right? So a lot of people, they just come here and eat at the food booths. They don't really know about the quick services. Uh, Regal Eagle is always very good. I either go there or the quick service over by uh, Living with the Land. Those are the two quick services that I like to go to here. Now Regal Eagle is the only thing that we've gotten of Muppets in a very, very long time within the Disney park. They have this amazing IP and they just do not know what to do with it. The Muppets Haunted Mansion special is fine, but Disney just doesn't know what they're doing with the Muppets. They don't know how to take care of them. It's slightly themed to Sam the Eagle America barbecue. There's a little nod to the Muppets where they like cook the barbecue. They have like a little apron with Sam the Eagle on it. So let's go in. Um, we have like 40 minutes to wait for our mobile order time. So we got time to kill. pick up your food. They have little silhouettes, kind of like that you can get on Main Street, right? Of Sam the Eagle and then Gonzo down there. People are clapping in here. It's not a tour group though. I don't know what they're clapping about. They're just really excited that the Sam the Eagle zipper is real. Okay, so I got the sliced Texas beef brisket sandwich rubbed with our secret brisket rub and then slow smoked and placed between garlic toast served with seasoned french fries. All right, let's try this. Finish the sandwich. Pretty decent as always, right? Is it groundbreaking? No. It gets the job done. It's like a 7.5. But when you buy the sipper of Sam the Eagle, you can either get a water bottle or they give you a separate drink on the side. been here for 11 days. How has been your uh, annual pass holder vacation this year? Overall, I would say four Five. out of 10. I would even say four out of 10. How many rides have you ridden? A total of nine, and of those nine, three of them were repeat. First time coming during the marathon, and we've never experienced it, and to be honest with you, if you're here for New Year's Day and New Year, the, the following New Year's Day, great. After that, get out. Just get out. The way the marathons hit, mm, 
it's just way too crowded. Lines are 60 minutes plus. Good luck finding anything, any any booth under 20 minutes. No good, no good. All right, let's hop at the creation shop, see if there's anything new real quick. Now for $35, they did get the new Jungle Cruise ears. Um, Allison already got these on Shop Disney, but they finally made it into the park. They finally got some new new emos. I thought this was the Jolly Green Giant for a second, but it is the Incredible Hulk. And then they have a sad looking confused little Groot. And then finally Snow White got some love and they have a little Snow White new emo. Uh, they got the new Lounge Flies. They're $75. Uh, come to Disney and celebrate the 100th anniversary with these new Lounge Flies. <laughs> they look so bad. $70. They have this zip up hoodie. Got Mickey right there. This is for the 100th anniversary. So we're starting to get all that merchandise. Uh, most of the 100th anniversary stuff is going to be happening in Disneyland. We're going to get a couple things here in Disney World, but it kind of reminds me of like OG MGM Studios a little bit. For $90, here's the new 100th anniversary spirit jersey. And then on the back, it says Disney World in glitter. And then you go down here and you have the whole squad right there and even Tinkerbell. For $50, they have a 100th anniversary Tinkerbell Walt Disney World pillow. $25, they have this adorable little Chippendale and a little tuxedo ornament. Now, I've been saying this for a while. Whoever is in charge of all the Disney Star Wars t-shirts needs to be fired. They are god-awful at their job. They make the worst shirts I've ever seen in my entire life. What Star Wars fan would wear them? Okay, it's $53, long sleeve, pizza smuggler. What does this have to do with anything? Okay, it feels like Spaceballs, right? Pizza the Hut. Just because the Millennium Falcon kind of looks like a pizza, that is just so dumb. It is so dumb. Now, here we have a brand new Star Wars spirit jersey. The Millennium Falcon, um, Millennium Falcon look a little thick. Um, this is gonna be... No price on it. And on the back it says, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Star Wars. $30. Wookiees, Rebels. This this is not a mistake. This is an actual shirt. Someone got paid to design this. All right, well, let's hope uh, for Festival Arts they have some good merchandise. Normally, they have good merchandise for Festival Arts. That's what I'm hoping for. So it'll be here before we know it. Even have count right now. Time to go to the boardwalk. Again, I'm nervous to see this new little coffee shop. I'm going to let you know in person. How does it look? I'm on my way to the coffee shop. What's your review of the coffee shop? So if you were to take your expectations and just lower them, it's lower than that because it's hard. I've still never eaten at the Flying Fish. It's on my list. So Bob Iger, favorite restaurant in all of Disney is the Flying Fish. He's got his own little room in the back where he has all of his meetings and everything. But it's also because the Boardwalk is his favorite resort. When he is staying here, when he comes to Orlando, he stays here at the Boardwalk. So that's why this is kind of like his baby. So I hope they didn't butcher it. Okay. Here we go. I'm honestly ner <laughs> nervous to see this. Now every nook and cranny of this lobby is to show like the old timey boardwalk, right? All the bright lights, all the fun carnival rides, the very warm color tones, right? When you think about an old time carnival, another great painting right off the lobby, right? Just look at the colors that are being used. Now I love the boardwalk lobby, right? One of my favorite little details is they have six paintings here. Each one of these paintings is of a different Disney castle from a different Disney park. Again, you're getting like the warm colors, right? You got the reds up there, you got the golds, and of course you can't forget about these creepy little chairs. Please Disney, never take away nightmare fuel chairs. All my time here, this is why I've never noticed this little plaque. It talks about the creepy little chairs. Little girl face chairs. These face chairs are nanny chairs. Were originally found on the 19th century European carousel. While children on the elaborate carved and moving animals, the adults were offered the still chairs to rest themselves between activities. Cast from circa 1880 European originals, hand painted and gold leaf. I have this wonderful detailed and themed to the era. Little souvenir coins. You have Chip. And you got poo, and you got goofy, right? Again, remember these colors. Okay, I want you to remember what a carousel looks like here at the boardwalk. This is a carousel in the correct theming of like the 20s and 30s that I want you to see what we're what Disney created. Um, it's closed. <laughs> Great. Uh, we can see inside though.
the f is this piece of sh Okay, so these are new. Apparently, uh, the managers, big wigs, were walking through the lobby today and they uh, added these little planters right there. So it adds a little bit of variety, but uh, the lights are flickering. Is it sad that the uh, the fuel rod station is better themed than the uh, carousel coffee? Okay, um, we're, we're leaving the boardwalk. Let's go back to the office before we head off to Animal Kingdom and uh, talk about the current state of the Disney Imagineering and um, what they created in there, that dumpster fire. Okay, we're, we're back in the office. I, I gotta do a little mini rant before we go on to our little Animal Kingdom part. <sighs> Where do I start? As we know, Disney's kind of doing this like modern minimalistic design and I don't think anybody likes it. Let's just say there's a lot more of it coming in the pipeline. Y'all gonna hate the Grand Floridian Refurb. I'm just gonna say that. Boardwalk is around $700 a night. A lot of people stay at the Boardwalk. It's a great resort. I've stayed there twice. Very immersive, right? You feel like you're in the 20s, the turn of the century hotel on the Boardwalk. It was this little gift shop where they had like stained glass. Stained glass has been replaced with just a, a painted piece of wood that just says carousel coffee. It does not fit in with any of the theming at all at the Boardwalk. It's, it's horrendous. It's bad. The best way to describe the look of that little coffee shop is a cast member break room. Kind of what they look like, kind of bare bones, minimalistic, and they just kind of like put some Disney pictures on the wall. That's what they do. You're paying $700 a night to uh, have a cast member break room coffee shop in the lobby. You walk in there, the place has been open less than a week. The floor is already gross and grimy. It's very bland, very sterile, not very welcoming, like that warm feel that the boardwalk has everywhere else. They call it carousel coffee, but they just put a picture of the carousel Magic Kingdom on the wall. No other theming besides some random picture. Then they have pictures of the teacup ride for Magic Kingdom. They just look like somebody's Instagram photos that they just uh, copy and paste it and put it in a frame and put it on the wall, which makes no sense. Why are we putting modern day pictures of Disney rides in a 1920s resort? It makes it makes no sense. It is baffling to me how that got approved. And I, I don't know. I, <laughs> just, it's terrible. Disney's very good at like putting their Disney charm, right? But they make it fit the theming. This, they just flat out took modern day photos off Instagram and put it in a 1920s. Oh, God, I'm sorry. It was so bad. I was in there probably a half an hour kind of filming and looking at everything. How many people walked by and they were all in disgust and very upset. There's not one single person that was pleased. And I do feel sorry for the cast members in that lobby because I'm sure they're hearing a lot about it, about how people were not happy with that current look of the new little coffee shop. So then you look over to the new little seating Area, and that's even worse. There's not even like a picture. You feel like you're in a like a in a waiting room to go get your blood drawn. It's terrible. Just chairs are just thrown in there and tables with no rhyme or reason. It just is not welcoming. You want to leave that area as soon as possible. The last thing you want to do is sit there and drink your coffee. You look at this terrible coffee shop, then this terrible seating area, and then you turn and you see this beautiful lobby of the Boardwalk Resort. I don't know what the Imagineers were thinking. There's so many brilliant Imagineers, and they know what things should be, but the, the budgets are just not there to make it happen. The coffee shop is terrible. It's god awful. It, it wasn't even open, so I couldn't even review the food or the drinks or anything, but I'm, sh I'm sure they're fine. But the whole look, I do not want to go out of my way to go visit that place. And then they like switched out the furniture in the bar area, also in the boardwalk. There was one table I believe that survived where it has that old timey feel of like checkers or chess. Then you look at the new tables they installed and they're just, they're lifeless and they don't fit the theming at all. I, I'm just at a loss for words. I'm just scared for the future of these Disney resorts because I know this is the way that they're taking them is to kind of look like this, this basic, bland, and boring design. And I know the Imagineers hate it. They're literally being forced to make this garbage. Those are my thoughts about Carousel Coffee. God awful. Disney should be ashamed of themselves for what they produced. Uh, on that note, it is time to go off to the world of Pandora. Let's do a little time jump and go to our little Animal Kingdom part of the video. Okay, my friends, we are currently at Disney World Animal Kingdom. I've not been here in a very, very long time. Now, this is all gonna be about all the new offerings they have for Pandora and the world of Avatar. There's a new nighttime show, some new food. I wanna see uh, what they've changed. There's also some rumors of a new ride coming, so we're gonna talk all about that. I'm excited to see what's going on in there. Hopefully, they've uh, brought back the world of Avatar back to life. So, let's head. One of the busiest times of the entire year and they only have two lanes open right now to get in. It looks like they have uh, some construction walls up around here. They just, oh, it just looks like they're redoing the fencing on this little animal enclosure. All right, let's see if the dumb match band works at all. Oh, oh, it's actually vibrating. So they've just played a royalty-free YouTube elevator music when you wave your magic band at Bambi. How immersive. <laughs> Alright, let's
Let's pop in a Chester and Hester's Dino-Rama. Uh, no, nothing has happened with a uh, primeval world. This is where Moana is supposed to be coming. Uh, this is just kind of a desolate, strange wasteland. World's largest pin truck. Uh, this is, used to be like a, they had the DJ dance party, right? And Chip and Dale and their dino costumes would be dancing out here. Chris used to work this, but now they just have it as an advertisement. Pins of extinction and more. Pins displayed here are for guest enjoyment and not for trading, for sale. Now I don't think anything is gonna happen to this land for probably two or three years until Moana and Zootopia come and they demolish all of this. So I think it's gonna stay, it's decrepit itself for the next several years. They cut the show kite tails. But they still have all the little platforms of where all the kite would uh, leave. They would leave those little barges and everything over there. So now it's just these weird half-built abandoned structures where the kites used to be. This whole area is just such a mess. So the line for standby for Everest goes all the way back there and goes all the way up here. All right, well, it says that it's a 60-minute uh, wait for Everest. Let's hear your review on your new Magic Band. Mm, the like life 40, 50, 60 bucks for something like this? We were at Coronado and the lifeguard came over and said that, just want to let you know that you can have water damage. Water damage, 60 bucks, water damage. But the I old thought they were waterproof. About the same. All right, let's see if it still shoots water. A little bit of mist coming out up there, but it's no longer shooting out up there. They used to have like, Navi face painting over here where they would turn you into a Navi. I guess that's gone. I figured right new movie They're gonna bring back everything. They used to have this giant music performance. They built all these drums for a performance They've yet to come back since COVID. Okay, these things are looking gnarly. These look like an old 50s penny or something I don't I don't think the drums work anymore So this is where the music performance uh, used to be they'd come up here and they would do drumming and they'd interact with everyone <laughs> You got to be kidding me do you feel like your annual pass holder money is going to good uh, use here at the parks? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. James Cameron approved. James Cameron approved. And just remember, Avatar is at $1.5 billion and Disney cannot afford to fix these drums. The Pringle chip, a, a native snack here in Pandora. You got a Pringle, you got a, a straw wrapper, and then in the bushes there's like there's like a Capri Sun back there. All right, now the Avatar Small World ride is a 95 minute wait. At least they still have like the waterfalls working. Flight of Passage is currently a 140 minute wait. All right, they still have the Christmas decorations up here on the mech suit. Right, it's the tag there and a, a left lemon ice cream right there. And then if we look over here, there's just some random uh, cheese sauce. Now they used to have a giant mech suit. It was like a meet and greet. And you could kind of learn about Pandora. It got cut and has yet to come back. I don't think it'll ever come back. All right, let's hop into Wind Trader, see if there's anything new. Now they do have some new uh, plushes from the new film. It's like the little sea serpent lock this monster thing. You're looking at $35 for this. Then for $23, they have this little um, bat thing. It honestly just reminds me of kind of like a beanie baby. And then for $35, they have like the underwater kind of like banshee. For $40, they have this baseball cut tea. They have this cool little like turquoise backpack. The floating mountains right there. You're looking at $40 for this backpack. For $45 they have this little spaceship hoodie. Okay for $85 they have this new spirit jersey. I'm digging it. Sure it glows during the nighttime. You can see the silhouette of the Navi swimming. So it says Avatar on the back. Then on the front it's got the little logo for Avatar right there. Kind of has like a faded almost bleached look to it. They have this like little plastic knife. It honestly just kind of looks like a um, if you've ever had like a little chicken tenderloin where you've cooked it but like a blue version of it. For $40, they have these little banshees that you can hatch from an egg and then they kind of chill out on your wrist. So they have a blue one, then they got a red one, and then kind of like a purple one. And they just kind of hang out on your wrist. You can turn your little baby into a little Navi. There's a little beanie that goes along with a little onesie. Then they have, uh, you know how like little kids wear Tinkerbell wings? They can wear little banshee wings that light up. And then this is what that spear jersey will look like with the black light. Here's a pretty cool short sleeve shirt. Now the shirts can be $40. They have a little kid zipper here for $15. It glows in the light. Here's like a glow in the dark shirt. This is gonna be $37. You got the, you got the banshee that right there beautiful. with the floating rock. Then they have this hoodie. It's like polyester. You'd sweat so much if you're wearing this in Pandora. So you're looking at $75 for this Navi hoodie. Then this lounge fly, you look like a banshee, but it's uh, $95. Kind of pricey to look like a banshee. Then for $45, they have Navi leggings. So you can go full on Navi. For $60, they have this like button up shirt. Uh, it kind of got that same design of the floating mountains, but it's 60 bucks. They have a $40 matching bucket hat. 40 bucks. For $45, they have this long sleeve shirt. 
shirt. They got like a new magnet for $10. This is like the mech guy who would walk around here in Pandora. He was like a stilt walker. It was like fake legs and everything. You could talk to him and ask questions about Pandora. Um, but this is the closest thing I guess we'll get to it is this action figure. All right, we're heading off to Satouli Canteen because apparently they have some new food offerings. Now this is one of the best quick service options here on Disney property. Everything is made fresh. You can see them grilling up all the chicken nice and fresh. And the drink, I got the uh, Illu Splash Margarita Carranzo Blanca Tequila with Kiwi Sour Mix Lime Juice with a Kiwi Slice. All right, let's start with the drink first. Tastes like a frozen kiwi like push pop, right? Nice, sweet, and subtle. Not too potent with the kiwi. You get a nice melony flavor to it. It's not packed full of tequila, but you do taste a little hint of it. I really enjoy this. This is like a 9.5. It's almost out of 10. This is good. We got the special new entree. It's gonna be the Ocean Moon Bowl, Blue Noodle, Tuna, Watermelon Radish, Pickled Dayacon, Rainbow Carrots, Avocado, Cucumbers, Red Cabbage with Miso, and a sweet soy drizzle topped with micro cilantro. It's time for some blue noodles. All right, let's try it with the tuna now. Some of the toppings. Now this is a cold dish. All right, here we go. Oh, I love that. Finish the noodle dish. Did it look funky? Yeah. But all the flavors are wonderful. They all balance each other out. Nice, robust flavors in there. Love the noodles. I love the tuna in there. I'm gonna give that a nine out of ten. Now it's time for dessert time. We got the Medicayan Medicina mousse, flourless chocolate cake, chocolate mousse, raspberry gel, boba pearls, and a milk and white chocolate garnish. This thing kind of looks like the flacra flacra reclinatus. The thing that you rub in the beginning is supposed to shoot the seed out. And then there's like a little banshee wing on it with like the uh, little boba pearls. So let's see how this is. Oh my God, that's rich. Oh my God. That sucker puts you in a chocolate coma. Okay, finish the dessert. Wonderful. I'm a big chocolate fan. That thing was perfect. It's not like a normal chocolate mousse, more of a kind of a, like a lighter pudding mousse. The raspberry kind of helps cut that really dark chocolate flavor. This nice sweet tartness. I think I'm gonna do a 10 out of 10 on it. It's a must. This is the first time I, in a long time I've been like, go get these new quick service options. Normally Disney quick service options suck. They're just normally terrible. Um, the entree was amazing. Our call drink was amazing. And the dessert was amazing. So, all together. Good job, Disney. Again, quality control everywhere else is terrible, but Satouli Canteen always has great food. So let's head off and go watch the nighttime show now. It's a bit about an hour. Let's do a little update. Um, has made a new friend, a, a smart water right there. That just kind of makes me frustrated, right? Because that's like a big picture spot. It's not hidden in a corner where we're spotting trash, right? That's a main picture spot. Front of the little mech suit. And there's been trash there sitting there for an over an hour. And there's more trash at it. All right, the one cool thing is like the bioluminescent, the paint that they have on the ground. It is pretty cool. Look, our, our magic band, it's bioluminescent. It lights up here in Pandora, or it did. Come on, Magic Man. Oh, there we go. Look, it lights up. All right, now the little creatures that shoot the water, only one of them are lit up. I don't know if the motion works during the nighttime or not, but I don't see them working. Like these are really supposed to be like lit up and illuminated, uh, but they're not. I think a lot of the lighting effects here in Pandora just not being maintained at all. The uh, Pandora nighttime show happens on the Tree of Life. It's gonna be every 10 minutes, and it's gonna be about three minutes long. I think it's happening right now, so we're gonna kind of wait for the next show. Okay, so they're just doing the standard little nighttime projection thing. The Avatar thing only lasted for like a week and a half, and they ended it for some reason. Right, one of the biggest movies of all time. And they ended their one special offering after a week and a half. What? Uh, Disney, what are you doing? Yeah, Since we accomplished all the Avatar stuff that's new, uh, we're gonna go back to the office and we'll talk about the new attractions that might be coming to the world of Pandora here at Animal Kingdom. Okay, so guys, we're back at home. Let's talk about the current state of Avatar and the world of Pandora at Animal Kingdom. It's not looking too pretty, right? Um, it's not being maintained very well, kind of like everywhere on Disney property in Disney World. Disney's just not pain for maintenance right, to take care of their immersive environments. When things just don't work or when they're just completely gone, the whole drumming circle has just become a stroller graveyard. It's not a good look. And I think James Cameron would be very upset if he came to Animal Kingdom and saw what the current state of Pandora is. The second Avatar film is one of the highest grossing movies of all time, $1.5 billion. That's currently what it's at right now. And Disney can't afford to maintain that little area. You would think with a brand new movie coming that they would kind of want to maintain and, you know, make it look nice because people are going to be drawn there because the interest in Avatar Avatar is now at an all-time high, and it just doesn't look good. Throughout all Disney parks, right, they're just kind of dirty. And it's not the custodial's fault, it's Disney's fault, because Disney will not hire enough custodial workers. The custodial workers are working very hard to try to keep the parks clean, but they're just spread so thin. It's Disney refusing to increase the hourly wage to bring people in. They have yet to reach a union agreement. Disney cast members might go on strike. It's just pure badness behind the scenes. Bob Iger, come on, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> you said in the interview that you felt bad you didn't increase the minimum wage. Now you're back being CEO and uh, you still won't agree to the union's demands just for a livable wage. So I don't see the cleanliness of Disney improving anytime soon. Not because it's the cast member's fault, it's because there's not enough of them and they're spread so thin. And then maintenance workers, they're also spread very thin. I was working at studios, I asked this worker, I was like, how long is this gonna take to get fixed? And he said, well son, there's work orders older than you here. Things take forever to get fixed. Just the quality is kind of dropping. But hey, the food was good in the world of Pandora. James Cameron recently talked to Bob Iger and apparently he wants to revise the Flight of Passage ride and kind of make a new Flight of Passage 2.0. Kind of add in some of the new scenes and story elements from these sequels that are planned. So that's really cool. So probably in a couple years, hopefully there's a new version of Flight of Passage coming out. But again, we'll see. Oh, I forgot to show you guys the little Sam the Eagle sipper. So he's got his nice bushy eyebrows and then he has a full like Princess Diaries moment. And uh, well, now the bushy eyebrows are gone. But that's how you put the fluid inside Sam. This thing is really cool. I really wish Disney did more with the Muppets. Let me know your thoughts about the current state of Disney. I'm sorry this really wasn't a positive or uplifting video. I just want to keep you guys informed about what's going on. So let me know down in the comments what were your thoughts about the carousel coffee and the current state of just the Disney parks. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Join the family. Oh, I love the family. I love the family. <laughs> because I'm going to keep you up to date on all things theme park and Disney. Hi right, guys. I love you all. I'll see y'all very soon. Oh, I miss Ample Hills. Now you just have the generic, honestly, really terrible boardwalk ice cream that's here.